Hey everyone, welcome to episode 3 of this very special retro series where we'll be taking a trip down memory lane with some of my very first original Transformers and G.I. Joe toys from when I was a kid, and their original boxes. With this episode's spotlight being the multi-purpose triple changer Astro Train. Now Astro Train had to be one of my favorites, and still is. I played with him a lot and had many a battle with him being front and center with Blitzwing and the G1 Seekers. Surprisingly, notwithstanding the thousands of times I probably transformed him, he is actually in great shape and has held up incredibly well over the years. And yes, while some of the stickers are pretty much non-existent at this point, he actually still snaps and holds together perfectly and is a testament to how well these toys were made back in the 80s. The colors haven't really faded at all, both white and purple, you don't see any real discoloration between the colors, and even the shiny Decepticon stickers look great. I'll probably say this every time I showcase the box, but I still cannot believe that I recently found these hidden gems at my childhood cottage, and I'm extra happy and surprised that I have Astro Trains, though like the rest, it is missing the inserts. The box is in pretty good shape for having sat in a damp basement for almost 40 years, and minus the phrase on the edges, looks just like I remember it when I got him. Everything's there, including the tech specs, his bio, and the great back of pack art. I love this figure and box, and is definitely a highlight of our Transformers collection. Alright, let's start with a review of the box and I'll show you first the Transformers logo here in the Decepticon colors and the price which was $9.97 down from $12.99 so this was $10. What stands out to me the most is the color they use here for Astro Train which is not the colors we got for the toy and you got this cool little Decepticon symbol which ended up being a rub sticker on the toy. It says Triple Changer Astro Train here and then transforms from Space Shuttle to Train to Robot and back. Another cool little feature, they usually show four steps for transformation, but here because he's a triple changer, they showed the three modes. On the side, you have the three modes, um, pretty basic, but with that cool 80s style design, same on the other side. And then looking at the bottom, we'll just flip it around, basically the same thing. Flipping it around to the back, you get this beautiful piece of art, which is the second, I guess, in the set for the boxes. Um, you also see tracks in red, so I guess that's Road Rage. A whole bunch of cool Autobots and Decepticons there. I was missing my points. I used them, obviously, to get some of the Transformers and the tech spec and information for Astro Train. So you can read his function, which is a military transport and his whole backstory which is pretty cool I'll share it again later and let's check out his tech specs not much to say for most of his specs as they're generally mid-range but he makes up for it in speed range and he's even got some skill so overall a great piece of Transformers history I can still see this iconic packaging and design on the shelf amongst all the others at a time when Transformers took up a whole aisle brings back the best memories Now on to the bot himself. So here he is in his shuttle mode. Still, like I said, in really great shape. And I played with him a lot. Um, he's got his stickers, which are mostly, I think, intact. I don't think I'm missing any. Um, some of them, like I said, are a bit frayed. On the top here, you got the rub sticker, which apparently still works. And those stickers, I think, are pretty much done for. Um, on the side and the bottom, all in really good shape. You have a lot of great design features. You can see the bottom of the locomotive on the wings here, um, on the black metal part. And then you have some wheels and the back of the locomotive upside down, which forms a thruster section. Here you can see the really great three thrusters that stick out. I mean, honestly, this design was a great design for what it did and especially for the time. So right into the transformation, we're going to lift these two parts up like this. These are part of the legs, and we're going to flip back the cockpit. fits nicely right inside, and these click right back down and pull out the legs. And mine actually are still really tight. Um, we're going to bring back this wing stabilizer. We're going to open it up like this, and just place it a little straight. Lift up the back compartment, and his head is there. We'll pull out his arms. They are a bit small I have to say but I don't know I still think they kind of looked really cool with Astro Train. They were fine. And then we'll just grab his huge laser 
and place it in his hands like so and there you have it Astro Train transformed into his robot mode so this design could be placed here or it could be higher up on the chest um, the actual picture in the box shows it higher up but the transformation steps show it where it is right here and on the side you can see his arms they move all the way around 360 they move out pretty well and then down here you have that sticker I was showing you earlier the Decepticon symbol and we're going to just flip it around pretty nice and clean to be honest like looks really good and again surprisingly he stands up really well like no loose joints at all after all these years I mean they built it well back then so now let's transform him into his train mode we'll take off the laser I don't really think there's a place to put it to be honest um, we're gonna push back these wings in like so click this back in keeps the wings in place we'll push the arms in and down pretty straightforward and then we're just gonna push each leg back in one by one and they click together and then we take the wings we fold them up 90 degrees and then the top part like so we'll do it here as well 90 degrees down and then just put those little flaps in bring this down 180 degrees and then open this little flap up and these are basically the train wheels and we're gonna do the same here and there you have it train mode or locomotive you can see my little flaps here are a little bit loose when in the train mode holds up better in the shuttle mode you got the nice Decepticon symbol here and the nice the wheels will work with the design kind of embedded into the side you got the front part of the locomotive really pretty good I mean like looks looks really nice for a triple changer from the 80s as you can see the metal on the front that's the wheel that kind of forms a back wheel for the space shuttle and you got the thrusters that make this locomotive a supersonic type one I guess and uh, there you have it like it's held up again really well and when when it's facing down those flaps stay in place so perfect for me and now let's just transform it back into space shuttle so we're gonna lift up these wheel compartments you can see some of the same elements used in the transformation of the newer Astro Train we're gonna bring down the wings open up those side flaps like I said they stay in place better in shuttle mode open up the back pull out these wing stabilizers lift up the front pull out the cockpit like this you just kinda of flip it 180 degrees and these shut down over it and click in place just make sure everything's nice and flush click that back together and space shuttle mode ready to transport Megatron and those damaged Decepticons from the 86 movie right into space. Let's start this section off with the most obvious comparison, that being G1 versus the recent Siege Astro Train. It's glaringly obvious that the colors are completely off and Siege Astro Train is sporting the colors from the box and what was supposed to be the original release colors for Astro Train, which I'll show a bit more of in a bit. Befitting of a heavy hitter like Astro Train, the Siege version of the Bob mode is much bigger than the G1 version, though you can see that a lot of the G1 design elements were borrowed from G1 Astro Train, including the boxy look of his legs, his chest area, even incorporating the closed wings look, the shoulder mounted wheels, and wing design. On closer inspection, you can see that they took those wings that flare open on his chest and incorporated them more subtly in Siege Astro Train's waist. Their heads are also different, other than the general shape, with G1 Astro Trains being closer to the original design and box art, while Siege Astro Trains is closer to that of the cartoon. Similar design elements used for the backs of the bots, which is nice to see, with a bit of change up to the thrusters and their colors. Both, in my opinion, are really clean looking, which is nice. Thought I'd show you what G1 Astro Train looks like up against Galaxy Shuttle from the Velocitron subline, which is completely based off of Siege Astro Train's model. The reason being, he's actually closer in color to G1 Astro Train in this mode than the Siege version is.
I reproduced as best I could AstroTrain's box art here using Siege AstroTrain, which given the colors, lines up pretty accurately. Would love to have gotten my hands on this version of AstroTrain, as there seems to have been at least one prototype in the box colors that they used in the booklet. I don't think they knew yet how he was ultimately going to look, as he even has Blitzwing Sword and Laser. As for Shuttle Mode, I don't know, I just feel they did it better with G1, accomplishing a lot with a little. I guess the parts that stand out for me are really the side panels that form the wheels of the locomotive, which are way more flush on G1 AstroTrain, and the back kibble which is nice and smooth on G1, with a much nicer and larger tail fin. G1 AstroTrain is also way more streamlined, which I like. Lengthwise, not that far off given the bigger discrepancy in bot mode. The back hides the train portion a bit better on Siege, but I do like the bigger G1 thrusters. From a top view, you can see how nice and clean G1 AstroTrain looks as compared to Siege. Wish they would have hidden all that mess a bit better on Siege, and will be interesting to see what they do with a Studio Series 86 AstroTrain if and when they release him. Again, a shot with Galaxy Shuttle for fun with G1 AstroTrain basically being a blend of the two colors. When it comes to train mode, I actually like both of these equally, though again I think they did a better job of streamlining G1 AstroTrain with those side compartments sticking too far out on Siege. A lot of shared design features including again the wheels on the back, conductor's compartment, the light at the front, and the overall design of the top facing part of the train. They also captured the front of G1 AstroTrain pretty well, and I like how they incorporated the feet portion of G1 that are visible in train mode into the scoop portion of Siege. I like the overhang on the back and thrusters a bit better on G1 AstroTrain, and feel they could have extended both a bit more on Siege. Both have great locomotive detailing on the side sections, again with G1 being a bit more accurate looking for a train in overall shape and style. Siege is much bigger and longer I'd say, but they do look really nice next to each other in this mode. And one last shot with Galaxy Shuttle actually making a nice little display of some Transformers locomotives. And for a bonus, I have my original GoBot Shuttle toy, Space C, for a bit of fun and nostalgia. I actually have two, but one of the arms on the other broke off, unfortunately. This one is a bit looser, and I believe was the first one I got of him. Nice to see these two guys together again from a time when these toys were everywhere and everything. So let's wrap this episode up with some stills of G1 AstroTrain and the box so you can gaze at all the wonder that is G1. You can also take a closer look at his tech specs and backstory, which is a fun read, and enjoy the G1 art and box, which I still think hasn't been beat 40 years later. I've thrown in some other fun display shots, which I really like the look of, as well as the other two G1ers I've reviewed already, my very first Transformers Trailbreaker and Hound, which you can see in the link here and below. Little by little, we'll build up my entire G1 collection in these images as we review each one. I hope you enjoyed this look back in time as we celebrate the 40th anniversary of Transformers, one of the most iconic toy lines, if not the most, of the 80s, that is still going strong today. With a new animated movie about to come out this weekend with Transformers 1, he is looking to another 40 years and a whole new generation of kids falling in love with the Transformers. And remember, it's all such heroic nonsense in the end.